Hi there, this is Dominic, and I'm coming to you from my apartment in downtown Los Angeles. I have a program centered around the great composer Beethoven to present to you this afternoon. Beethoven would have been 250 years old if he had still been alive today. It's his anniversary this year, and I thought it'd be fitting to sort of pay homage to him. The first piece on the program is one of his early piano sonatas. It's his third piano sonata in C major. Now, Beethoven was quite proud of this work. In fact, of all of his piano pieces, he played this one the very most. And right off the bat, we get a sense of Beethoven's pride and confidence in this work as it's rather virtuosic and very assertive from the get-go. The first movement is rather large and shows Beethoven exploring many different harmonies and avenues of expression. The second movement is particularly beautiful. It has wonderful organ-like uh, bass chorale moments. And Beethoven, again, is showing that he knows how to write a melody that has questions and answers. The third movement is entitled Scherzo. Scherzo is translated to basically joke. And the third movement is quite um, running along in a very carefree and happy manner. The fourth movement is interesting in the sense that um, at the time, the fourth movement was considered unplayable. It had this opening passage that sounds like. And this passage was considered by many, even Haydn, a great composer and Beethoven's mentor, to be unplayable. Um, certainly, people may have scoffed at this writing until they heard Beethoven play it. And then they recognized it as genius, including Haydn, who admitted that Beethoven was a genius, unlike himself, but still a genius. So um, I would say that here we see Beethoven can be lighthearted as well in this sonata. He's not always a grumpy, serious man that we come to know him as, uh, looking at the Fifth Symphony as an example. But this is an early sonata where Beethoven is enjoying himself, and in the fourth movement, he's laughing up and down the keyboard. So I hope you enjoy this third sonata of Beethoven.
The next selection on the program is Brahms Intermezzo 117, number one. Beethoven would have had a huge influence on the young Brahms. And in fact, this shadow of a genius affected Brahms so much that it wasn't until the age of 46 that Brahms was able to finally finish his first symphony. It took him 21 years of hard work and toil to produce something that he felt could justifiably stand in some way next to Beethoven's nine titanic symphonies. So Brahms eventually did escape from this shadow of Beethoven and in his late music, like the piece that you're about to hear, he really has come into his own. This intermezzo is quite special to me. I find it to be um, a lullaby. In fact, Brahms himself called this piece a lullaby for his sorrows and he took it upon himself to write two lines of a Scottish song entitled Lady Anne Bothwell's Lament. He wrote these two lines next to the title of this particular intermezzo. The translation of these lines is sleep softly my child sleep softly and lovely I feel sadness when you weep. So with Brahms, we have this poignant music that is very special and sort of nostalgic. Um, and I find the title intermezzo to literally mean in the middle of something. So whenever I play this piece, it's almost like cinematically, you suddenly are shifting your focus on a scene, maybe a parent and their young child, and you're suddenly gazing at this, this beautiful picture. This intermezzo is in three parts. The first is a lullaby. The second part is a little bit more darkness as something underneath might not be all right. But we do return in the third part to the material that we hear at the beginning of the piece in a beautiful lullaby, sweet as ever. So I hope you enjoy Brahms Intermezzo, Opus 117, number one.
The next selection on the program is a movement from Sergei Prokofiev's Seventh Piano Sonata. This sonata would have been composed in 1942, um, over a hundred years after Beethoven's years of piano sonata writing. And it's nice to kind of compare the two and see how the composers used this form in different ways. The third movement is the movement that I will play. And instead of writing allegro or adagio, fast or slow, to start the movement, Prokofiev writes a more interesting title. He writes Precipitato. Precipitato translates to crashed. So instead of saying this movement is fast, Prokofiev wants the piece to sort of have this feeling of inevitability where with laser-like focus, the music starts from the beginning and propels to the end. And I would say that in addition to that aspect, this, this movement has been described, and in my opinion, is sort of a jazzy rock and roll type of, of music. It um, has a little bit of humor in it, but also it also has this intensity and drive, rhythmic drive, that does not let up. In its short three minutes or so, we go on quite a wild ride. So hold on tight. concert with the Prokofiev that you just heard. Indeed, the excitement that is attained provides quite a rousing conclusion to any performance. But I'm also quite fond of encores, and let's think of the next piece as just that. So I will be playing a song by Beethoven entitled On die Hoffnung. The translation of this title is To Hope. I had only heard this song recently during my time in quarantine, and I was enchanted by it. 
I decided to embark upon a special project to transcribe it for the solo piano. The song is in three verses. I played the first verse as Beethoven wrote it, and then I composed two of my own variations to round off the work. Um, I find this title and this song to be quite fitting for this trying and difficult situation, as when things do seem dark and bleak, it's imp very important to have hope. So I wish you and your loved ones safety and good health, and I really appreciate you joining me for this special performance from my home to yours.